glad you joined us today. Let's stand up, and we're going to join together and sing about our deliverer. Welcome to church, everyone. My name is Chris Morrison. I'm one of the pastors on the team here. Just want to welcome you. Thanks for being here this Sunday morning. Hey, if you're new with us uh, and you're in the building, there's a QR code on the back of the seat that you can scan with your phone, uh, and that'll lead you to a Connect card, and we would love to connect with you and get you connected to the life of our church. Uh, and if you're online watching, we'd love to connect with you at home as well, and you can uh, click the link in the comments, and, and there will be a Connect card there. Uh, and we also do prayer requests. We, we'd love to hear from you as to how we could be praying for you. We do that each week as a staff team, and it's an honor and a privilege uh, to do that. And so if you would let us know how we could be praying, we'd love that. But this week, we're going to continue on. It's the last message in our series, The Disciples Prayer. We're going to be hearing from Pastor Barry about God is our deliverer and our need for deliverance. So it's going to be great. But would you keep standing as we continue to worship?
Show you my 
Missionaries have the most incredible stories. They're on the front lines. They get to interact with people you and I have never got to encounter before. They experience new languages and new cultures, and they're doing it all for God's glory. He does incredible things through their ministries. Unfortunately, some of those stories go untold, and that's our passion. We want to take those stories and share them with the church because the world needs more missionaries, and story is what motivates the church to engage the world. My name is Carla Williams, and this is my husband, JC, and we have three kids, Verily, Valor, and Venture, and UCC sent me out about 10 years ago, and we are now serving with Team Expansion's Communications Ministry. Through the Communications Ministry at Team Expansion, we get to train missionaries in effective storytelling, and we also provide resources that will help them tell their stories better. Simultaneously, we get to tell those stories ourselves using channels like our website, social media, blogs and videos, all these things that we use to consume story. We are extremely thankful for UCC and from the beginning you've been supporting and encouraging us and it's our honor to get to serve with you. Yeah, please keep praying for us and for our family, pray over our ministry and that we can continue to capture more stories and um, get more people involved in the Great Commission. Thanks, Thanks UCC. UCC. This is our time of uh, offering, and it's really an opportunity for us to just give back to God out of all that he's blessed us with and, and partner with him in what he's already doing, both here locally and globally. It is our mission to love God and love people and bring the two together. And we as the church are able to carry that mission out because of people like you who are generous, faithfully generous uh, with what God has given you. And, and we get to boldly bring hope, the hope of Jesus and the gospel to people whom uh, we may never rub shoulders with, we may never meet, but we get to support partners like Team Expansion and, and missionaries that, that go to those places. But we also get to do ministry here in our own backyard as well through your generosity uh, to, to minister to and to bring hope to those that you and I do know and that we will rub shoulders with. And so when you give here, it's, it's giving to bring hope. It's giving that others may come to know Jesus both near and far. If you came prepared to give today, we have three ways that you can do that. 
And the first is uh, if, if you want to give with a check or cash, there are physical drop boxes on your way out that you can just drop your donation in there. Or um, you can give via text. So you can text the words, bring hope, uh, all one word to the number on the screen, and it'll send you a prompt. And then lastly, you can go to our website, university.church slash give. So uh, if you'd like to do that, you can do that now. And then we're going to turn our attention to the screen for church news. Hey, UCC, if you're new or if you've never taken the next step to becoming a member of this church home, we invite you to attend Belong today from 4 to 5.30 p.m. in the garage. This is a great time to meet our staff, learn about our beliefs and values, ask questions, meet other new people, and become a member. If you would like to attend, please scan this QR code or you can email connections at university.church. We look forward to seeing you there. Next Sunday, February 7th at 9.30 a.m. in the garage, we are hosting a lab that will walk you through how to spend time in God's word using our journals and a simple method called SOAPs. For more details or to let us know you're coming, go to our website, university.church or our UCC hub app. This sermon series about the Lord's Prayer has been so good and convicting in many ways. We wanted to share with you that our next sermon series is going to be about marriage. I know some of you are thinking, well, I'm not married. And hey, same. But we can learn so much from this series about becoming the godly men and women that the Lord calls us to be. I don't see the dark side. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the dark side. <laughs> I squeeze my toothpaste from the bottom of the tube, and she squeezes it in the middle like a Philistine. Eventually, you will use all the toothpaste. It's gross. It doesn't matter. You can just roll it at the end. I say what I think. <laughs> Sometimes it hurts him. <laughs> he really is like the machoest guy <laughs> with the most tender heart. So. Yeah, so communication, yeah. <laughs> we have two separate toothpastes. Um, this is... This should be off camera, please. <laughs> Listen, I know I'm always talking about exciting things that are happening here at UCC, but this next little announcement is so fun that we have a special video to show you. Check it out. I'm so glad that you guys have made it a priority to be here and are joining with us both online here in the auditorium. And I want to give a special shout out to our traditional services up in the chapel. Would you please give them a welcome, everybody? I'm so thankful for the technology that can combine all of our locations together. And as we've been in this series about the Lord's Prayer traditionally inferred as We've been talking about it as the disciples' prayer because it was the Lord who taught the disciples to pray and gave them this example. And there's a ton of rich wisdom that we've been able to pull out of this week by week. And as we were getting ready to start out today, I was just thinking about life and some things that just kind of jumped out to me. You know, anymore, everything has a warning label to the extreme, I mean, 
I think about this. I mean, should a stroller really have a warning to the parent, remove child before folding? I'm like, when I first saw that, it's a real warning label. I thought if a parent did that, they ought to have their parent card taken. But then I thought, wait a second, I'm the dad who threw my daughter up underneath the ceiling fan. And, thunk, 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 and oh, she, she's all right, we think. We don't think there's any permanent, you know, twitches going. But uh, we all do dumb. You know, or the drill that literally has, this is not for dental use. Hey, who would do that? And if they did, maybe you should let them. Um, yeah, or this last one. This is the one that just burns me up. It just blows me away. Even Radina's house, all the coffee shops around the world. Coffee is hot? Who knew? I, I, I'm just telling you, if you need that warning, you lost your right to coffee. Um, you know, when it comes down to it, this world has a big old warning label on it by God that sometimes we forget. In fact, Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. The reality of the word of God is so powerful to me, and I'm so thankful that 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 we don't live in candy land. We live in a real world that's fallen and has sickness and sin and problems. And that's why we pray this last portion of the prayer. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us, deliver us from the evil one. You know, uh, this prayer has so much wisdom, and I just want to give a quick recap in case you're just joining us. It all begins with two words, our Father. Everything else is dramatically different if you have that foundation, that he is dead, that he's the boss, that he's in control. Then we understand, oh, it's about your kingdom come, not my earthly wants and desires. It's may your will be done, not mine, as Jesus even prayed before going to the cross. And then we understand as we pray, oh Lord, provide for my daily needs that he's the deliverer, he's the provider of all that we need. And last week we talked about our forgiveness and that our ultimate need is of grace from a holy and perfect just God and that Without forgiveness, without grace, the only option is hell. And that grace is what has given us this acceptance, this love of God. And it's not by earning. And there's this crazy thing that our forgiveness of others impacts the forgiveness of Almighty God of us and how they impact us. Whoa, and if you weren't here, and I, I so hope you'll go back and listen to it because forgiveness is vital. It, it messes people up when they don't work through those steps of grace. And today, our deliverer. Oh, we need a deliverer. You may not know your need of deliverance. You may not know your need of a good God to step in and save the day. You may not even know the danger that is surrounding you. In 1989, there was a famous picture taken that I want to share with you. And so many have seen this, and there's been posters and motivational things that are totally inaccurate as to what is going on. And, and there's this, oh, look at the guy in the lighthouse. He's at such peace, and the wave is crashing around him. Well, there's a famous photographer who knew that some big waves were coming. He actually rented a helicopter, and it was just taking some pictures and just got lucky to basically take it at the perfect moment. Because right after this moment, that guy that's standing there all peaceful is going, <gasps> and diving back in. He said in an interview afterwards that he would have been dead if he was one step further away from the door. See, that wave broke out the first story windows, washed almost all the furniture out of there, and he almost was swept to his death. He says, you can't play with the sea. Do you realize the Bible describes our God as a strong tower and the righteous run to him? And if there was ever a time that we need to run to our God, we need to run to our righteous place of holiness, our God, our deliverer is now. And so often we don't even realize that the 
Water is crashing around us, and we're about ready to be swept out to sea if we don't return to the only source of hope that we have, and that is found in him alone. You know, as a pastor who's done now at this point countless weddings, I have one thing that I really focus out at the beginning to do, and that when I talk to the young couple who's all in love, and it's just so grand, and she loves me, he loves me, and everything's going to be great, and, and we're, and I'm like, well, well, let me bring you down to earth. I'm so happy that you're in love. I need you to understand, this is going to bring some of the greatest joy to you that you could ever experience And I also need you to know it's going to bring you some of the deepest pain that you're ever going to experience. It's kind of like when you, when young people have their first child, they're like, I can't wait to have this baby. She's going to love me. She's going to just be sweet. And she's just going to always know that I'm mommy or daddy. Everything's going to be grand. And and you don't, no, 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 no. That baby's going to grow up. She's going to have blowout diapers. She's going to throw up in your face at some point. It's going to be painful. It's going to be hard. She's going to rip your heart out at times. And she's going to bring you great joy and love. And See, when you say the vows, it's for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health. And I'm so thankful that God is a God of real. See, if a preacher stands before you and just tells you of candy land, he might be describing heaven, but he's not describing what the Bible says about this earth. And I want to just give you a little truth because if you go into marriage, if you go into parenting, if you go into life and you don't realize what reality is, what will happen is you just get knocked out and the wave will knock you out into the sea and you're just floundering and go, what happened? See, here's the bottom line for today. Don't be surprised by evil. Pray for deliverance. That's what this scripture here is about. Evil is in this world. That is a part of where we live. But we have a God who is big. We have a God who is powerful. And we cry out to him in times of need. Oh, James chapter 1 verse 13 says, When you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. I'm going to give you two quick points here. The first one you see, it's help us not to choose evil. That's the first half of this. It might have been, lead us not into temptation, as you might have been brought up in the Lord's Prayer to say, well, the, the, if you look at some of the actual context and the structure of what it's saying, it's not a matter of God leading us into temptation. The emphasis we're actually saying is don't let us yield to temptation. So help us not to choose evil. I hate to admit it, but I choose dumb sometimes. Let me share a a short story It's something I've shared before that I think you vitally need to know. As one of the guys who volunteers in our jail ministry, actually, he shares it every time. There's new people who come in, and he says, you wouldn't believe their heads. as they go, yeah, that's true. This describes the life, and let me just read this to you. I I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find my way out. Chapter 2. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I still don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. It isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. Chapter 3. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in it. It's a habit. It's my fault. I know where I am. I get out immediately. Chapter 4, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. Novel idea, I walk around it. And here's where we are today in society, and we so need to understand. I walk down a different street. See, that's a choice I have to make. 
I am not pointing a finger at a messed up society where all these sinners are out there. I'm just telling you straight up what the word of God says, that we are all sinners. And I don't want my identity to be there. I want my identity to be in Christ. And so the power of this Lord's Prayer is to begin to say, our Father, my Father, you are Lord, you are the boss, I have a new king, I have a new sheriff, so to speak, I'm going to do it your way. You know, there's this thing of sin that's really hard to deal with, though, because we, we live in a time when, kind of like I said last week, we are in a society, a time in history in which there's a spirit of offense, just constant. I have it, you have it, society has it, and we're just constantly offended by this and that, and how dare you, and, and if not careful... We just want to kind of stick our head in the sand about even our own problems, our own sin, and it's hard to hear truth. I, I want to go on one bit further into verse 14 and 15 of James chapter 1 that I already read when it says, don't say God is tempting because he's good. Now in verse 14, it says temptation comes from where? Our own desires which entice, now before I go any further, this is actually, you can get some fishing words out of this. I mean, there's actually the, the root and the meaning here is where we get the idea of lure as an entice fishing away. You know, when you go fishing, it's so important to know what the fish want to bite. You give them what they want to bite and they're not that hard to catch. You know, if you throw it out there and they want shiny, you give them shiny. If they want stinky, you give them stinky. If they want red, you give them red. If they want worms, you give them worms. But if they want worms and you give them shiny, they ignore it. Now, here's the truth. Satan's been around a couple of thousand years. You don't think he knows how to fish? And he throws out the temptation and we go, ooh, it looks yummy. And you know what happens? Honk. And he just pulls us right on over. And he pulls us away from our father who loves us dearly. He pulls us away from our savior and a plan that is better than anything is worth. He pulls us away from marriage that we said, till death do I commit. He pulls us away from our integrity. He pulls us away from our character. He pulls us away from hope. He pulls us away from life. So let me finish. He drags us away these desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. When I or when you, when we jump into bed with desire, we give birth to sin. And when you allow that sin, you allow that temptation to stick around, it gives birth to death. Separation from a loving father who cares so deeply about you. So that's why we pray. And don't let us yield to temptation, dear God. But deliver us from the evil one. See, if not careful, we blame God for things that are our choice. I've done it. We blame God for things that I knew better when I walked in. You know, uh, I, I wish I could say that, you know, if you just hang out with God, you're going to lose all your desire to sin. Just, you know, hang around. I, I'm there. I, your preacher has no desire to sin, never says a cutting word, is never smart aleck, never caustic, never. Uh, uh, just play softball with me and you'll find out that I like to win and I can get worked up and uh, I don't even want you to talk to my wife. She could tell you so many things. My kids, ooh. See, I'm falling and I'm God's child and I'm learning to follow him every day a little bit better, but I also know that I need him desperately. See, I need accountability and I need people to speak into me just as I speak into others and I encourage you to make sure you have that or otherwise, if you just go, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I don't need help, Got her, got him. And he'll just drag you right where you said you never wanted to go. The second half of that text is rescue us from the evil one. 
So this is the part that's not my choice because there's a lot of bad, there's a lot of junk in the world that I had nothing to do with, you had nothing to do with. And so that's where we go to the second part of deliver us from the evil we did not choose. For those who are younger, and we're all susceptible to this, but especially those who haven't had a lot of experience of life yet, I know the last year has seemed just atrocious. It's been terrible. We look back and we say, man, there's been a lot of division. There's been a lot of pain. There's been a lot of, and it's just, oh, things are bad. But if you talk to someone who's been around for a while, you can also remember back to something like 9-11 and it was bad. You, you go back to Vietnam and you hear the atrocities, the horrible things, the hell that people went through. It was bad. You go back to Pearl Harbor and the destruction, it was, it was, it was bad. You say, but well, North Korea now, well, yeah, Russia, Soviet Union, where, yeah. It is bad. And there's been a lot of bad throughout history. In fact, you go, natural disasters are horrible, yeah? Natural disasters have always been horrible. And they have ravaged this world. It's a part of a fallen world. And if not careful, I compare this world to a standard of heaven, and that is not it. It's what I'm aiming for. That's what I look forward to, and I'm praying that his kingdom come, but it's not on this earth. You know, 50 years ago, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated and incredible stuff that he did. He preached a great, incredible truth out there and yet we're still struggling with it today. I read one of the nastiest things this week. I was just, I was like, what, really? As a, a father, 50 some years old, died and his kids and his wife went to bury him and, and he was denied being in, oh, no, you can't be buried here. This is a white-only cemetery. That happened this week. So it still happens. You know, today, here's what I need you to hear. Because we can just say, man, you know what Jesus told us? I tell you all of this. Why? So you can have peace. Peace. This doesn't go together in our logic. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. And you're going to give me peace out of this? But take heart because I've overcome the world. See, he's saying my daddy's bigger and badder than anything in this world. You may face some problems here, but guess what? He's the one who's already overcome it. I know the end of the story, so to speak, here. And too many of us get caught up in the right now, and we get into this world, and we get frustrated. I've been there. I mean, just this week, my wife was lifting me up, saying, Barry, and she's speaking in hope because I needed to hope. I needed to hear that, and we have to constantly remember that our God is good, and I can take peace. And I pray, may your kingdom come. May your will be done through me and around me. See, I got to remember where the war is. See, the scripture tells us in John chapter 10, the thief's purpose, the devil's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My God's purpose is what? To give a rich and satisfying life. Philip Yancey has one of the most incredible little statements in his book, Disappointment with God. He says, don't confuse life with God. If you can get this one statement in your head and in your heart, you can avoid countless hours of pain, of disappointment, of counseling, of frustration, and fight, because if not careful, we confuse life with God. We try and hold earth up to a heavenly standard. We try and say, but this, and you're right, there is something that is more than this world. There is frustration. There is sin here. There is a war going on. The Bible makes that clear. And yes, I yearn, I desire something more, as the Bible says in Romans chapter 8. All creation has been growing and groaning in the pains of childbirth because we know that this isn't it. We know that there's something more, and there is. 
So I don't want to depress you. I don't want to discourage you. Just like I don't want the young couple to go, oh, marriage is going to be great. But I also want them to have reality that when they fall down, when one skins their knee up, the other one is to pick up. They're to lock arms and never give up. And there will be struggles, but that's okay. It's part of this world. So I long for heaven, and I long for a day when he says, enough. No more virus, no more disease, no more sickness, no more war, no more division, no more hatred. I long for that day. But we got to remember where we live. C.S. Lewis in Mere Christianity, a book that if you have not read, I challenge you to read it. Mere Christianity, it will stretch your brain. It will help you to understand why you believe what you believe. It will tackle some difficult questions. But it's just simply this. We are in enemy-occupied territory. That is what this world is. The Bible makes it very clear that he's given us freedom of choice here on earth. There's good and there's evil. You're in enemy territory. We're filled in this scripture with spiritual warfare description. And I know that at times we can just go, but I want candy land. I like unicorns and I like, you know, pop tarts and And uh, I I like cotton candy and ice cream and cake, and that's kind of what I want. You know, uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie Saving Private Ryan. It's uh, a very difficult, horrific almost movie to watch, especially the scene on the beach of Normandy. It's a scene of life and death. This week I was thinking about that, and I think we lose sight of what's going on around us at time. And see, here's the truth that I want you to understand. In that movie, there are really only two categories of people. There are soldiers who uh, look at peace, and they're calm, and they're not reacting to the war around them, the bombs going off, and there are those who are flinching. There's intensity. There's, There's a... You know the difference in the two? These guys are alive. These guys are dead. And if not careful, we don't want to see the war around us. We want to just put our head down and act like nothing's going on. And and he said there's a war that is raging. And he has promised that he is greater than anything the devil can throw at us. That even the gates of hell will not have any chance against our Lord God, and we must hold on to this truth. But understand, there will be war that's going on around us. There are bombs that the evil one is going to throw out spiritually, emotionally, physically, and we got to be ready for that. we got to be on our guard. That's where we put on the whole armor of God as the Bible describes. And the good news is our daddy is bigger and badder than him. You know, my dad, some of you have seen, I've had him up on the stage before, He's, uh, he's my mentor, and I'm so thankful for a godly dad. I know some of you went through a hard place there. Maybe you didn't have that loving father. But, you know, my dad, I, just to be blunt, he's one of the most loving and kind and generous and tender men I've ever met. He's a man of integrity. He loves the Lord. He loves people. I weighed as much of him in middle school. I, I, he's not a big man. But... If my dad was around while I was scared, you know what happened to that fear? just went away. When I was a little boy and I had some things happen, and my dad jumped in, I went from petrified and thinking I was going to die, and I remember, Dad's here! And you know, as much as my dad loves me, it's because I knew that he would lay his life down for me. And you know what our God has done? He loved you so much that he became man. And that's the whole thing that we talk about in the Trinity of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he laid his life down for you that he is victorious over death and nothing can separate us from his love. Let me read to you from Romans chapter 8. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No! 
Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, or demons, neither the fears of today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from our God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if there was ever a time for the church to wake up and to agree by saying amen, it'd be now. Amen. Amen. There's nothing that the church could ever go through that you could be separated from your love of your father. Do you hear me? See, if not careful, you'll get overwhelmed with society. You'll get overwhelmed with the hurt. You'll get overwhelmed with the loss of a loved one. And you give up hope and you stop the sharing and you stop caring. And and you think this whole world's gone to hell in a handbasket and why even try? And There is bad in this world. But I take heart because I know who's in control. You know, well, it doesn't feel like he's in control. Yeah, you have no idea what this world would be without him. It's kind of like when I was teaching my kids to drive. I remember we lived right outside of town, and it was a dirt road, no traffic, nobody around. And when we get to that road, I'd pull over. I'd say, come here. You're going to drive the last couple blocks to the house. They didn't know how to start the car even. They didn't know what a brake pedal or a gas pedal. They they didn't know how to stay out of the ditch, but they were driving. As I did all kinds of stuff that they didn't know. And we'd get there, and I'd kind of course correct. And and they'd be there, a little girl, barely able to see over the steering wheel. And they drove. They did what they could do. And they trusted me with the rest. Do what you can do. And trust as you sit on dad's lap, knowing that the heavenly father has you. And he promised to never leave you and never forsake you. Yes, it may be a little rough at times. You may hit some potholes. But I keep praying. Deliver me. Deliver me. Give me strength. You know, the scripture finishes out in this verse 13. Saying, don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Especially for those who were brought up Catholic, you would go, wait a second, that's the end, right? Uh, And some of you, and depending on the translation, uh, you might have a footnote. And some of you have it right in there, this last sentence. We have such authority of the scripture that we can trust over thousands of years and evidence and so much manuscript authority that is amazing that we can trust this word. There's a couple of spots where we think there's a chance that they added in uh, something from church history that we might have. And this is a benediction, if you might say, that is in some manuscripts and in some it doesn't, so they're not sure on it, just to be clear. But that's where it's put in. It's a Yes, God, you got it. You are the boss. I'm giving you all the authority. And it's the benediction of saying amen. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Saying, oh, Lord, you are my God. Nobody is equal to you. You are my strong tower. And I run to you for salvation. When I hurt, I got to remember my Savior hurt too. Do you know the Bible gives this incredible example called the Lord's Supper or communion, and it can be so encouraging. I hope that for those who are here, uh, that you have that in the chapel, that you would grab it. If you don't have it at home, you'd grab something, a cracker, whatever you have. Because I want to take this with you. Because he said, if they persecute me, why would you expect not to be persecuted? He said, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome it. 
And then he went to a cross and he was beaten and thorns jammed on his head and and he died in our place. That's the consequence of sin. Death is separation from God. And he was separated for the Father for a moment as he took my sin and your sin upon himself. But before he gave the disciples bread and juice saying, this represents my love for you. This bread represents my body, which will be broken for you. Take it and eat. And he gave him a cup with juice, wine in it. And he said, take this drink and remember my blood will be shed for you. Please take a few minutes right where you are at home, in the chapel, right here in the auditorium, just to pray. Knowing that those first two words of the Lord's Prayer, our Father, is what matters most. Is he your father? If not, would you make him your father? Tell him that you thank him and that you need him. Lord God, I thank you so very much for each person here. I ask that you would lift them up for those listening around the world that they would know that they're a part of the body of Christ beyond anything this world could throw and that together we are strong because of your Holy Spirit, because of your love, your grace, your hope, and that tomorrow can be better because of you. Today, you can carry me in spite of whatever is happening because my hope is in an eternal tomorrow and you are my father. Would you join with me together and say this Lord's Prayer one last time. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand. God.